Hi everybody, this is Courtney and I'm Fiverr Fox Studios. Today for Mosaic Monday, I'm doing a quick little instructional video to walk you guys through the steps of determining your multiple. This is another attempt at this. As a reminder, I am not a professional designer or crochet teacher, <laughs> but I am just trying to share with you the way I do things in a um, attempt to help those of you who want to do some of your own designing. So today we're going to start off looking at pattern number 11. This is one of mine. This is a chart that's showing just one repeat of that design. So we're going to talk about how you can count your stitches in order to determine your multiple. So we get started by first you design out your piece. You have one design only. As you can tell, this is not even yet here at the other end. I do not have this column showing again to make this design even. So if I was going to work this, this is actually would be perfect for in the round because I don't need to even the design in the round. When I work, I'm looping back around so everything will look evenly this way. So in this case, it takes 12 stitches for all of these rows that you see here to create this design that's here in the middle right here and I know this because I counted them one two three four five six seven all the way to 12. So this design if I were to copy this exact image move 12 stitches over to the left and paste it in I would have the exact same design and I would see that just those 12 stitches is all I need to keep doing on each of those rows in order to create this. Now, if I'm going to work this flat, I'm going to be determining a multiple that is 12 in this case, plus something. Those plus stitches allow us to even out this design. So in this case, for me to even this out, I'm going to need to take this column number one which represents the first stitch of the repeat of every row. And I'm going to copy it by doing Control C. And I'm gonna come down here to the cell that's just after the 12, so right here. And I'm going to Control V to paste it in. So now that I've added column one down here to the end of the design, my design is now even at the row start and row end. And I'm going to be counting this evening row right here, or this evening stitches separately. Because the main design, I only need multiples of 12 to work it. And I can work this over and over as many times as I need to. And in the set of 12, and then at the end of the row, I'm only gonna have to restart the repeat for one stitch at the end to make it match with the beginning. Now I'm gonna come here beside that last column, and this is where I add my single crochets, and I'm gonna do that at the start and end of the rows. And we can move this down and put it in every single spot just copy it all the way down. All right, so now we have where we began with our multiple of 12. And this is our design. We just counted our stitches, so we're going to highlight that right here in yellow. Now we need to begin to count our plus stitches. So at the beginning of the row, we have one stitch that we need to count for our single crochets that will start every row. At the end of the row, we have single crochets again. So we're gonna count those, so that's number two. And then we have the column where we restarted the repeat for one stitch to even out our design. That's gonna be three. And the last stitch we need to count is number four. It's a turning chain. When you're working flat, you always have to add a turning chain. It's not charted. You don't see it. You do your starting chain in the same color that row one is. 
So that's why you need your turning chain because we have to have one in order to turn and begin working single crochets back down that row in the same color that we chained in. So every single design, when you are working out your multiple, you're gonna count your stitches of the design. Then your last step that you're gonna take is to add your single crochets or border stitches at the start and end of the row. We are restarting the repeat for one stitch to even out our design on this one. You will not always have that. It's gonna depend on how you designed it as to whether you will have that extra column to add in and to count. In my case, in what I do on the majority of my designs, that is a common thing for me. We restart the repeat for at least one stitch at the end of the row, and then our final stitch of every row is always a single crochet. So we just count those separately. If we did not need that that column added in to even the design, then we would just be doing a multiple of 12 plus three, because we would still need to count our single crochet at the beginning, single crochet at the end, and then a turning chain. Because we need to even our design, we have to do this in a multiple of 12 plus four. And that's how we'll be working this design. Hopefully that's helped you guys to kind of visualize what you need to do. If you were to take this right here and try to replicate the design again to check yourself, you would just grab your original 12 stitches, 12 columns that makes up the multiple, and then we would scroll over and go over 12 stitches exactly and we could copy it and we again two of those side by side creates this design so again down here at the end i would need to add that column for restarting my repeat copy come down here and I would also need to add my single crochets, copy, and all the way down here, and paste. Now I have a completely workable chart that includes my repeat done twice on the row. So I'm showing my design twice on this chart. It's one repeat tall, two repeats wide, the exact same 12 stitches are worked over and over all the way down my row. At the end of my row, I'll find that I have two stitches left and I'm going to restart my repeat for one stitch and then do my traditional single crochet in the last stitch of the row. I count my plus stitches last, so my additional stitches needed to work a project flat. I always count those last. So I determine my multiple first. It's based on the number of stitches needed for our design. The amount of rows doesn't matter. It only matters the number of stitches that you need to make in order for your design to show up on down as you work. I count my restart of my repeat stitch, my single crochet at the start and end of the row separately and I always add one turning chain to those stitches. So a multiple of 12 plus four will be used to work this flat. When I am done at the end of row one, I will have one less stitch than what I chained. So for this one, if I was going to work two repeats of it, I would take 12 plus 12, which equals 24. So I'd have 24 starting chains. I would add my four extra chains to the end of that count. So now that brings me to 28 chains. And when I turn and begin working row one, at the end of row one, I will have 27 working stitches because I only have that turning chain for that very first row. After that, I'll be left with 27 stitches and I would work 27 stitches all the way 
until I'm done with my project. I think the big block on that is you're not thinking about every design that you're crocheting. If you were to stop and count the stitches that you're doing, if we're working on a design that's a 24 plus 4 multiple, you're working 24 stitches over and over. The repeat that I give you is based on 24 stitches. Whatever the multiple is, we're working that same amount of stitches over and over when I give you guys those repeats in the videos. Anything in the last year, it's been done with the same methods being used. So you could check it and you'll see that I give you a repeat. And if you were to count all those stitches in the repeat, it is going to give you that multiple that I tell you guys were working in that day. So hopefully that'll kind of help unlock a little bit more, help you guys be more creative. And until next time, bye for now.